I've, I've hit the go button, so. Oh, beauty. We are live. Welcome, Campbell Flakemore. Welcome back to the podcast, Max Gorn. It's uh, good to have you back on after a little bit of a disappointing period for Melbourne fans. Yes, it was. Thanks, boys. Thanks for having me back on. Um, it was disappointing uh, that last month uh, because we won the two games to finish off the year, but unfortunately went up to Cairns and uh, wasn't able to get a result up there in both of our games against sides that I still believe are, uh, um, are very good. Uh, Freeman were even with us on the ladder at the time um, and proved uh, in their next three games that they're a good side and Sydney almost took Geelong to the cleaners in the last round. So they were two good sides, but um, we think we are better than them at our best. So we just weren't at our best. Mm. How was um, how was life in the bubble? You're back in Melbourne now. Uh, it's pretty topical in the sport of cycling at the moment with some races somewhat questionable. How was uh, life yep. up there? Uh, uh, the bubble had its ups and downs. Um, it, it, leaving the bubble without a... Uh, a finals campaign sort of felt like we are there for no reason. Um, mm. So it's almost got some negative connotations to the word hub now. Um, <laughs> but I'm presuming we, we, we're a good chance to be in it next year. So um, we got some good learnings from it. Uh, but um, the cycling one where they're moving from town to town was a lot harder than what we had to do. We, If we had to play out in Adelaide or Cairns, we'd charter flight there, charter bus, no talking to any uh, members of the public. And then straight back to our hotel hotel once we finish. So um, it's a little bit easier for us. Mm. It's uh, one positive of being in lockdown is that we can pretty much lock in for the next 21 days as of Saturday to uh, tune into our second grand tour of the year. That's what we're here today to preview. Uh, me and Campbell had the pleasure of uh, the tour on while there wasn't many, many joys to really enjoy in Melbourne over the last yeah. couple of months. But two is, uh, the Giro starts tomorrow night. We're here to preview it. Um, have you got yourself the GCN race pass, Max, so you can tune in? I do. Um, I don't know why I ever bothered with um, Eurosport, uh, although GCN, GCN tends to this have the Eurosport new... commentators. Yeah, this is a new thing. Yeah. Yeah. This is a part you... of... Um, uh, it is new, yeah, that's right. New thing, part of um, GCN's owned by Discovery, Eurosports owned by Discovery, some kind of merger. But it does yep. bring it does bring joy that we can access it. Uh, it's it's a Giro Campbell. It's kind of everything you would expect. Yeah, well, it's nice that it's starting in Sicily, proper Italy down there. Um, and there's no messing around either. They finish they finish on Mount Etna on stage three. So <laughs> <laughs> they're getting right into it. There's a TT on the first day. The second day, there's a little bit of an uphill punch. So uh, there's going to be guys. Their, their race is probably going to be over GC-wise uh, after three days. But um, looking at the start list, it's an exciting start list. I don't think there's anyone that did GC that's um, at a tour that's coming to the Giro to do GC. But um, yeah, I think it's going to be a pretty exciting race, and hopefully they can they can get through the race with no no COVID scares. But it seems like Italy, it's just whatever, just let it let it go, let it run. Mm, yeah, the the Italian way. We saw a little bit of a scare at Bink Bank Tour, um, and a couple of races being cancelled. Also within that race, there is a heap of races being raced. The Welter overlaps it. Um, yep. It's a pretty busy a busy few weeks. Uh, you boys, yeah, um, the, the the Amstel Amstel race got got canned, didn't it? Mm, Amstel's gone. Did Amstel get yeah. canned? Uh, yeah. yeah. When did this come out? A couple of, couple of days ago. Yeah, Holland's, Holland's, of days ago. Holland's Holland's gone pretty big. Um, obviously, those two stages out of the Big Bang Tour, but then I think Amstel's gone as well. Mm. Yeah, so it'll be interesting, but I think from. A few reports and a couple of um, comments I've seen. I think like the Italian government's pretty accommodating to the race, <laughs> the home, the home grand tour. Yeah. Um, if we thought ASO was going to be lenient, you can guarantee that the organisers <laughs> are going to be even more lenient. 
and, um, and, 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 and from that, the Volta is going to be even more lenient than that. <laughs> they just, just start whenever. Just tell us what time you're finishing. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got, uh, we've got the, the Giro starts tomorrow night, and then we run into Leo's boss. Lies based on the A Sunday night, get Welvogen during the week, the Ronde as well, as well as an overlap to uh, the Welter starting. And then we, uh, uh, Depan as well, if you want to count that, as well as Roubaix in there. So it's a hot three weeks. If you do have any uh, questions, comments as well, please drop drop them in the box. They'll be coming through. Um, we might just run through the 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 team sheet um do you want to go team by team do you want to go highlights do you want to go gc do you want to go sprinters how do you how do you guys want to run it your call cool, albie you're you're driving i'm happy to just go through the teams and have a bit of discussion like we did uh, at the tour i think i got it wrong in the tour going back on what i said i i uh, I, I, I called emmanuel bookman top top three i think he almost finished in the bottom three <laughs> Did, how many? I mean, I, I went Pino. He, yeah. he fell off the face of the earth after eight days. The only thing I got right was saying Bernal uh, would be no chance, but I did say Sivakov would be the one that would take over, and he was over before <laughs> before, the, before the tour started. Yeah, to be fair, he, he was affected by crashes, etc. Yeah. Um, I, who, I think, who did you have for the win, Albie? I think I had Bernal for the win. I, yeah. I had um, Brailsford's theory to come through strong, but boy, I was wrong. Uh, yeah. The only no thing one. that I thought... No one had Popica. The only thing that I thought I had kind of semi-right was uh, Lopez for third. And then uh, that sure got thrown out the window <laughs> as the last TT. So I think, yeah, I think... Actually, I might have had Roglic second. Yeah. But I don't know if we can... Any, any of us can claim real victories in the punting. No. I think yeah. there's a bit more known in the Giro. There's a bit more known. We'll start with the AG12. Have you guys got the pro cycling stats? Start this stuff. Yeah, I can Always. Do. Yeah. We'll start with we'll – go, we'll go through the World Tour teams and then um, if we've got anything to touch on, we can touch on the Pro Conti Italian teams. But AG2R, AG Le Mondial, um, to kick things off – Ooh. I haven't got much for you. <laughs> Looking yeah, at I, haven't, I haven't got a whole lot to add here. Uh, they were all in for the they're all in for the tour by the looks of things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, t- to be fair, there's only a few names that I actually recognise on their team sheet: <laughs> Tony Galapan and uh, Larry Warbass. So you think it'll just be uh, aggressive, aggressive racing from AG2R? Who is who is going well from AG2R is Cosmofire. I, I thought it was a, a just he went for a polka dot little run in the first week, but he's actually a genuine rider. Yeah. Mm. Well, we won an under-23 Worlds and then was second or third at uh, Flesh Wallone on Wednesday. So yeah. clearly it wasn't just a, a flash in the pan because he had it for like two two weeks, even more at the tour. So that's off to him. He was yeah. getting ripped by Lance on his uh, <laughs> podcast. <laughs> <laughs> For for being uh for being well, Lance well stated that he's not a fan of the poker trot jersey is because it doesn't represent the best climber, and Cosnafar was getting hooped every day because he's gone so hard <laughs> in the breakaway. Uh, by the end of the tour, he was he was actually loving the jersey. Yeah, because yes, yeah. the best climber eventually won, which was the which best. Was nice to see. Right. Yeah. Um, Astana. Mm. Full saying at the top of the list. With uh, Lopez backing up from a, a Tour de France and Vlasov, the new young hotshot uh, who continues the trend of young riders this year, bursting onto the scene and um, stating their presence on the world tour. Can this, um, Fung Sang win? It's, it reeks of Bobby Star, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah. Um, but Astana at their best um, tend to have a flaky GC hope and then they go and win five stages. So if Full Slang <laughs> cooks it early, they're, they're putting down for three or four stages at least. <laughs> <laughs> for, uh, Full Slang's looking super strong at the moment. Um, and to target to target the Giro, he didn't go to the Tour. So he means he means big business and looked pretty looked pretty good at the Worlds. Just a one-day race, so you can't really read too much into that. But... 
I mean, off the top, I was saying that there wasn't many GC boys from the tour that are going to the Giro, but Lopez is there. So I don't know. I don't think we can expect too much from him going yep. quite deep in the tour. Everyone seems to be on full saying. I don't, I just Not don't know. Like he was, yeah, he was all right at Torino. Um, he was a pass, but he wasn't normally he comes. Well, maybe this is, maybe this is the year. Maybe this was what he was doing wrong. He was coming in too hot to the grand tours beforehand. And yeah. uh, this year he's taking a little bit of a, a back step. Not that you can really gauge anything off this year with, who knows what's happening? Who knows how his riders are actually preparing? But he's yeah, had a lot I of think... a lot of failures at uh, Grand Tours, so that's I mean that's where he'll uh, that'll be his Achilles' heel. Mm. He's also thirty five years of age. He looks like he's about twenty five. He's just got good which, Danish Danish qualities, which is a dinosaur based off the last couple of years. Yeah, big time. I, I think they'll be looking. A podium is a is a minimum requirement for full sun. I guess it's it's nice for him having Lopez ridden the tour, kind of rules him out. You wouldn't think he can go back to back. <laughs> well, not with three um, time trials. Yeah, especially with not with three time <laughs> trials. <laughs> um, so he'd have him as support in the in the mountains, you would think, and then Vlasov as a somewhat emergency. Yeah, yeah. What do we see Vlasov? Was it at... Um... Lombardia with with Forza. yeah Lombardia the, big... the thing that George George Bennett was was a those those three got away yeah Vlasov right. Bennett and Forza yeah um, Vlasov actually got the better of him at Torino in the lead up that's right just out of interest so it'll be interesting to see how that dynamic unfolds Barre McL- McLaren um, Campbell got anything for us Bill Bowes in there. Yeah, Bill Bow's there. Um, he was yeah. actually quite was actually quite good at the tour. Bill mm. Bow. Yeah, he was. He was really. And good it didn't make sense why week. why he was good. Like Lander just kept his two <laughs> domestiques in the top ten for some reason. Caruso and Bill Bow were fighting for something. I don't know what they were fighting for. <laughs> I reckon Caruso had top ten ambitions himself, just quietly. Yeah, right. <laughs> he was he was doing the job, but not not a hundred percent. Just doing it. There was something in their there was something in their contract for top ten finish. Bill Bow and Caruso because they just wouldn't <laughs> give up when every every other domestic just stopped and walked up the hill. They just kept riding. Yeah. Or is this uh, just Lander bringing the team's GC from Movistar over to Baron <laughs> McLaren? <laughs> must be. I guess they got ba- uh, Enrico Bataglin as well for those kind of semi part time sprint kind of opportunities. But besides that, there's there's not heaps standing out from, from their team, from my perspective. Anything else to add on their front before we move on to Bora? No. No. Bora's got Peter Sagan at the top of the list. Um, he, there's been the talk talk of the year really with him kind of stated to do the Giro early doors, being mediocre at the tour for his standards. Um, will guys be able to back up from the tour and just bounce straight into the Giro for another three weeks? I think he gets he gets pipped again for the for the sprinters jersey as well. I reckon Arno mm. Arno Demar is on fire. I, I don't know what he's what he's doing. He doesn't have his great uh, lieutenant in Daniel Oss there as well. Mm. Um, and then it, it hurts Rafael Marcus GC again because um, we saw what Bora were at the tour. They looked like they had a hand in every pile. Um, so I don't, I don't, I don't know what's going on with 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 Bora because I'm a big Rafa Marca fan. Um, so I don't know what's going to happen because Saga looks like he's going to fail again. Come on. Yeah, I mean, you you think Os being being Sagan's chief chief lieutenant as well as being Italian, you think he if he could have been here, he would have liked to have been here. But I think the other thing that we've got to keep in mind is when um, when we get to Quick Step, this will become clear. But the classics are on at the time of the Giro, so a lot of teams are, are choosing to focus on the classics, and maybe Os is uh, has chosen yeah. the classics over over the Giro. Mm. And when you say the classics. All the classics. Which are, yeah, which are, <laughs> like every big, one big, of them. Like yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna ride the Giro, goodbye spring classics. It's all over for you. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
Jeez, you would have you would have hated it at the start of the year, um, at the start of this COVID period when they're sorting out who rides where. You go, you do the tour and the classics, and then you can do yeah, you can do the Giro, mate. Like, <laughs> you can have tour and classics, or you can get the Giro. Um, the Giro guys are a bit stiff there. Yeah, mm. yeah, big time. I guess that brings us to our next team, CCC team, a favourite of uh, a favourite of the Stanley Street Socials. Yeah, oh, and he's backing it up. He's backing it up, our man. He's he's going B to B. Zacharin is uh, hunting Giro stages. He's also, from what it looks like, leading the leading the charge for CCC to pick up a sponsor very late in the piece. <laughs> One of two teams. Well, I, I heard that there it's it's come to it's come to an end. There, uh, it's all over. Uh, I think the Corridon Circus team or whatever it is has, has purchased the license off of CCC ah, yes. to be the world tour. So uh, I'm not sure what that means for Jim Okowitz, whether he still will be at the helm going forward or whether it's going to take on new management. So end of the line for CCC, they couldn't quite get the job done at the tour. And looking at their team sheet here, it seems unlikely that they're going to jag any sort of results. Mm. Especially because, uh, unfortunately, there's there's dissents in the duo again. <laughs> yeah, and, so and we're also, hilarious. and we're not in summer either. We're you know, we're operating in uh, <clears throat> getting into the colder months. There's going to be some wet dissents and uh, yeah. Zacharin's performance into Le Dum VA or whatever it was called when Nance Peters left him was absolutely atrocious. So <laughs> I don't think we can expect too much from from Ilna and, and the rest of the boys. Ross, Joey Roscoff, he can do a good time trial. Uh, whether he's targeting that one on stage 14, 34K, it's a nice little distance for him. But realistically, I don't see much coming from them this tour. Yeah. Mm. Um. Thomas has just confirmed that Wanty Group have picked up that license. Wanty Group, yeah, okay. I guess the same way that CCC picked up that license a couple of years ago as a nah. pro contest. Well, wow, it was an amalgamation with Emerging. Uh, with BMC, yeah. Andy Matthews, too, on YouTube. Uh, Patrick Conrad, seventh in the Giro 2018, could be a could be a long shot for uh, Bora Hansgrove if things get a bit grippy for Peter on mm-hmm. the. Uh, on the green jersey slash stage front and uh, the Jew man, Andy Sims, is back with the end of the line for the old BMC. So it's good to see too. Yeah. Okay, Cofidus, um brings us to the team that possesses the first of 18 Australians in the Giro. It, it was wild. Uh, it, was, it was very thin in the tour and they've just come back and <laughs> – uh, 18 is is most most out of a continent, let alone country. Almost, I mean, Europe are obviously ahead, but um, yeah, crazy no, numbers. The Italians take the cake purely because of the uh, pro Conti squads attending. But uh, next in line, Australia. Well, yeah. there's a bit of a bit of pressure on the boys because we only had two at the tour, and they got a podium and two stage wins between them. So between 18 of these Australians at the Giro, we're expecting at least that. There mm. is one in there. There's a couple of stage wins as well. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely think so. I thought Caleb I was going to be starting the Giro as well. I, I, I heard that was the plan, but clearly things... Well, then he, saw, then he saw what stage three was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cofidis <laughs> um, is taking Viviani from the tour... Consoni um, and Nathan Haas are some quickish men. Viviani yeah, well, was was a bit bit ordinary at the tour. Would you say big big pressure on Viviani going into this Giro? Yeah, he will be on huge dollars. Mm. Home he soil. Was, um, he was Mark Cavendish esque at the tour this year. Nowhere to be seen in the sprint uh, group. Mm. Yeah, um, yep. you can only presume that he's setting himself for this, but. Um, yeah, confidence will be slightly disappointed with their tour. Obviously, Guy Martin struggled as well. Mm. Um, I think they 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 want to get something out of this duo. Yep, yep, absolutely. And Viviani's the man. I don't see anyone else really having the quality to to win in any other way besides a breakaway, which is which is a lottery. Um, 
but I think there might be a few little stages that suit Nathan Hass if he's if he's in some good shape. Mm. To kind of quick step, as Campbell touched on before, Classics on is taking their big, big stars, but you'd still expect victories from this squad that yep. uh, really struggle not to win. A couple of handy sprinters in there. Ballerini. Hodgie. Hodgie. Bit to work with. <laughs> a little bit to work with. I mean, when you look at it, nothing really excites you a lot, but you just know that this team know how to win and they're, they'll be attacking left, right and centre, getting into moves and um, they'll, they'll get a stage win somewhere along the line with one of those guys, you'd think, just given the yeah. recent history. Um, EF Pro Cycling, we had a point before they've they've released a new team kit uh, oh. with, with uh, Isn't it good? Pallets. Max, what do you think? Do you uh, yeah, I've seen it. It's um, no, it's a bit too loud for mine. A little they bit too loud. It. Although they don't, they're already a loud color, so they probably don't have much to work with. They've probably toned it down actually from the big <laughs> top. But um, oh, I, I like people changing their jumpers, and I always like um, when we wear our indigenous jumpers or um, our heritage jumpers. They're always fun to wear, so I'm sure the F guys will like it. Do you um do you like keep special kits when you get them? Yeah, we get uh, there's two jumpers no matter what. So if you don't rip your jumper, you get given one, which is good. Yeah. Um, the rest of the jumpers all get put in for charity and sign in and stuff like that. But if we don't get if we don't rip one, we get our spare one. Yeah. Can you just pull up the jersey, Albie, onto the screen? Get a picture yeah, of it, bring it up. If you just keep talking for. A- Sick, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of it. I know it's loud, but it's something different. And I think what's this? It's a skateboarding brand that's looking to come on as well. Yeah. Like, I, I don't mind it. What a shame they haven't sent any of their riders over to the Giro to wear it. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's unfair on that's unfair on Lawson Craddock. He's actually a, a relatively good American climber. Um, well, I, I, you know what I'm saying. And, and I don't know those. I don't know the two Aussie boys on 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 the on the sheet. Well, there's three of them. There's there's James Whelan, Lachlan Morton, and Simon Clark. Oh, so, sorry, I, I know Simon Clark. I don't know the two bottom ones. Well, well, Lockie Morton. I, I'm super surprised to see him on the start list for Grand Tour. I thought his his days were done with these big World Tour races. I thought he was more on the gravel, um, kind of doing that angle. But to see him. See him in the Giro. I'm not sure whether it's some sort of, you know, whether they're uh, short on riders or looking for it for some sort of promotion. But I'm very yep. surprised to see Rocky Morton uh, on the start list. And it's good to see James Whelan, the young boy from Melbourne, get a start. And I'm guessing it's his first Grand Tour. Here we go, boys. So I, 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 <laughs> it is wild. There's no pink in it at all. No. Well, I, I think I think it's genius just from the fact that we're talking about it on the podcast on a team that's probably not really going to register in the next three weeks too much. Um, yeah. It's got an awful amount of hype over the last day or two. Um, the only question the only question I have is: Have you read into what the what the palace is? It a sponsor or is it a collab? But like, I'd be a bit flat if I was EF. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> dumping in millions, and then this goddamn yeah. duck comes on the front of the jersey for the second yeah. biggest race in the world. Yeah, uh, but I, I like it. Sure. I haven't read too much into it. I've just I was just shown the jersey today, and and mm. I quite enjoyed it personally. Mm. Yeah. I don't think I think EF are more worried about their tour result rather than um, where they're sitting on the jumper. <laughs> mm. Although Martinez won a stage, didn't he? He did, and he's yeah. shipping off to Ineos uh, next Is he? year. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, to the actual team itself, so moving past the jumper, three Aussies on the squad. Um, is it all about the all about the stage, the breakaway, really? I think so. Yep. 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 Big time. Breakaway season. 
Group Armour FDJ, the next the next squad on the list, uh, headed up by Arnaud Demar, an awfully questionable omission from the Tour de France, which uh, we we highlighted multiple times. Um, I think they got one vote in the Tour Unpack as to their actual performance uh, when their hottest sprinter, maybe the hottest sprinter in the world, was was missed out for Pino. He's headlining their Giro campaign. Yeah, without dwelling on it too much, it was Thoughts? it was it was ridiculous that he was left out. French champion in searing hot form, and then when Pino went down, they they were pretty lost. So you think he's going to be pretty motivated to come out and maybe show management that he was he was up for it? And you think he's he's probably the quickest guy, quickest guy on the the start list. So you can expect a few stages for Demar. Yep. Have they gone too late? Is his is his form peaked? Would he have? I feel like he would have peaked at the tour. Potentially, he was flying before the tour and during the tour, so uh, it's a good point. Is it possible to hold it for for another month or whatever it was from the start of the tour? Um, I'm not too sure, but like I said, I don't see any other really quick guys on the on the start list, so he won't have to be in top top nick. Hmm. And he's just mentioned in the comments below, like, he picked up 11 wins in August. <laughs> what? It's not bad. Not bad, huh? Uh, another Australian in there, Miles Scottson, too. Uh, will be a nice little bit of horsepower for Arno in the uh, lead out in a in a in a team that looks like they're going to pick up a lot of a lot of wins, especially in this flat stages. I don't know if anyone's really going to get the upper hand on him. Yeah. yeah. It would be nice to see um, Miles actually in that first TT. It's It would be a good chance for him maybe to pick up the – can he do the white jersey or is he too old for that now? Miles, 94, maybe he's too old, but uh, 15K, yeah. it's, a, it's a good distance for him. Channel his uh, X-Track prowess. Yeah. <sighs> Max, have you got any insight for us about Israel Startup Nation? Uh <laughs> – <laughs> No, not quite. Um, Dan Martin's not riding it for us, is he? No. <laughs> Alex, Alex, Alex Dowsett might, might win a time trial, could he? Yeah, yeah, he could do. Uh, Brandel's also done some good time trials uh, in the past. Rick Zabel for a, for a gallop, potentially. Um, yeah. Again. A breakaway not, gallop, maybe. Not much, not much to be excited about. Mm. A lot of Sudal, um, as you mentioned before, Cam, uh, Caleb was half expected, but uh, he's not he's not appearing. Um, mm. And they've also they also announced last week that they've got a fair few boys on the chopping block. Who a couple who's up? a who's couple in this spot? There was ten names. I don't have the names in front of me, but I remember Dibbon and Hanson being on that list. Yep. Well. They, they get a bit of a lifeline to chase a result in the Giro. Mm. Jill um, Bear and Jill Bear, Degan Goldman, Caleb Ewan all going to the tour has come out to bite them with what they've listed here. Thomas DeGent might be the, the one they just go try and get him in a couple of breaks. But, um, and yeah, I haven't got much else. Adam, Adam Hansen's got a, Adam Hansen got a stage win in him. Does it feel like he's almost, I don't know, just what's he? I haven't noticed Hanson for like for two years. I, he hasn't really popped <laughs> up. There was, is that harsh? Maybe it is, but I remember there was a point there where he was setting the record for the most consecutive grand tours. That was kind of the talking point with, with Hanson, but uh, I don't think we will be expecting too much from him. Here's a stat from Annie Matthews. Adam Hansen confirmed today that he'll concentrate on Ironman triathlons next year. That's um, not a surprise, but <laughs> a definite definite change. Just getting some miles in the legs in the Giro. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Mitchell and Scott went to the tour with no Australians. Mm. They made up for it here. Hagee, mm. Lucas like Hamilton. Yeah, Happy, Damo House and Cam I all on the start list with Simon Yates at the top of the list. Yep. They I think they might have realized that the tour probably didn't go like they, they wanted. And on paper, they've probably got one of the, the strongest teams 
um, at this Giro. I think we can expect Simon Yates. He's, he's probably one of the favourites along with Brian Thomas um, and Full Sang. But he's going to have some some good support with with Jack Haig and Lucas Hamilton probably especially and Damon House and Cam Meyer and Book Walter can all climb as well. So um, mm. very, very strong team around Simon Yates. Lucas had that uh, stage win in the same race that uh, Yates and Thomas were in, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. I want to say Torino. Um, and I imagine... Best world to win. For, the form's probably been building since then too. So it's exciting to see what Lucas can do. And he was uh, super in this race last year. So uh, some good memories for him. Uh, movie star... Campbell, I'm just going to cross to you to give us some intel on what's going on here. Well, the only names that I actually uh, recognise is David F. Viella. Didn't know that he was riding for Movie Star. I, I thought he was <laughs> um, And Dario Cataldo. Who, who was, rode the tour, didn't he? Uh, did he? I'm pretty look. sure he rode the tour, Cataldo. Have a quick look. Uh, it's a it's a weird squad. <laughs> it's a weird team. Correct, Max. He did he did do he did do the Tour de France. Uh, They've gone from having five GC to none. Mm. Not a bad little shipped them all out. Yeah. Um, geez, not much to talk about there. Next, There's not a whole lot to talk about. There's a couple of questions that have just dropped in. Um, yes, we might just touch on them quickly. Can you if? Can you watch the Giro on free to air? No, you can't. Um, as per a couple of years ago, you were, uh, the RC, whatever they're called, the Giro owners sold the rights to um, pay TV only. So you need to pick up the GCN app, which has it, um, or I think it's Fetch or some other streaming service in Oz if you want to watch it. Um, can it's you about guys 11, predict? It's about $11 for the month on mm. GCN. So it's not... It's not bad value. It's, not, it's actually really good value. Yeah. I've enjoyed it. Yeah. And uh, they also came to the – they saved us really because the other alternative was like you had to buy a box and get the box shipped to you and sign up to some subscription and add on an extra and then you picked up your race sports. So <laughs> thank you, GCN. Uh, David, on the Facebook, can you predict how far the Giro will get? We touched on this at the – we touched on this at the start. We think the Giro is untouchable due to their links into the links into the uh, Italian government. I think that I think the Giro is pretty solid. We don't have any worries there. On to the next team, NTT Pro Cycling, the other squad that was announced mid tour that they are they're looking for a sponsor. I th- I thought that team was awfully solid. We did I did a podcast with Doug Ryder mid COVID, and he was all talk about NTT. Uh, well, as a GM, you would say that. <laughs> yeah, but he was. Yeah, I know, but I, I genuinely believed him that this is like a real long-term partnership. We're going to get through this. This is a, um, this is a short-term hiccup. The sport's going to get through it, and NTT is going to be a team this year, next year. But uh, yeah, it doesn't the, help. The take... it doesn't help. It doesn't help when the Tour de France was very unsuccessful too. Very unsuccessful, yeah. After a hot start, um, I, I didn't even see the coverage of um, when Giacomo Nazzolo withdrew. I don't even think it was mentioned. He just didn't rock up one day. Is that right? <laughs> he just he just stepped off. He just stepped off. The bike <laughs> yeah. one day. Yeah, um, right. I, I can't remember whether was there was Ill. any crashes in the in the first week. Illness, yeah, okay. Illness, Illness. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he just stepped off. Um, and it's surprised that he hasn't, you know, that was the first week of the Tour de France. That was over a month ago now. And uh, I thought he might have recovered to to be on the start this year. But, uh, he didn't even, he didn't ride Worlds, did he? He wasn't in the Worlds, was he? No, I don't think so. No. Yeah, you would have thought on a home circuit. And he, he was he was moving well. He was featuring in the bunch kicks. Um, mm. Well, one one uh, Euros and also one Italian Nationals, as yeah. Max knows. Very well. Or well, paid off Max's mortgage pre tour. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, um, they, they actually filled in not a bad team here. Well, they need to. They they're obviously <clears throat> still hunting mm. for those those sponsors and Campanarts is a, is a red hot favourite for the TTs. Um, 
although with Ghana and Dennis there as well and Thomas, there's going to be some real competition for for the TTs. But there, he's the world hour record holder, so he's clearly got good yeah. pedigree. And and Pots yeah. of Vivo, um, home home tour. Uh, hopefully, we can see something from him. And you can only, yeah, you can only hope Pots of Vivo was saving his legs. Otherwise, we're not going to see much from him <laughs> after no. the tour. Of the tour. No, um, and, and, and Menkes, Lewis Menkes, I mean, he's kind of disappeared off the face of the earth a little bit too. But they're, they're, they're doing, not promoting uh, sports bet, but I will. Um, Louis, <laughs> Menkes, Louis Menkes has got a head-to-head with Ben O'Connor. Surely that's Ben O'Connor home and host. Um, I haven't heard Louis Menkes' name since the Under-23 World Championships in 2013. Yeah. He, wow. had the, he, had the, he had the white jersey run with the Yates boys, did he? At the tour, yeah, the one, yeah. one of the ones the Yates boys won. To be fair, he he has he's been top ten in the Tour de France twice, Alex. So, mm. okay. <laughs> <laughs> to, your, to your point about uh, Cap Capenarts, he was fifty two seconds off Ghana at the Worlds, mm. which is a pretty good indicator of what's what's to come. Yeah, um, I think based off Ghana's performance, he's going to be a pretty stiff to beat. In, uh, especially the first two time trials. I mean, that first one's got his name written all over it. Jeez, yeah. ima- imagine if Ineos missed the time trial with three of the best five time trials yeah. in the world almost. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I think pink jerseys um, going there one way or another with with Dennis or Ghana. I think it's a little bit too short for Geraint Thomas, but there's, even, there's a little bit of downhill from the start uh, in the first couple of K as well, which would suit Ghana. He's a Big, big boy. He's over 190 centimetres and 80-odd kilos. So, um, yeah, get on him for the first stage. Mm. Well, now, Adam's question. So, Dylan Sunderland's in this squad who I feel yeah. for as a Neo pro. Signed pro, did all the hard work through the under-23s, got his pro gig, COVID hit, has hardly raced, and then his team's coming unstuck. Um, and to Adam's question, if your team comes unstuck, there's no – there's no consolation prize. You haven't got a job for next year. So, yeah. Tough to I'm, know, but a good opportunity here. Yeah. I'm not too sure of the the ins and outs of what happens if you have a contract with the team and then it folds. I'm not sure what happens there, but hopefully uh, he doesn't have to deal with that. But a good chance for, for Sunderland. He's a, he's, a, he's a rider that likes um, you know, sniffing out the breakaway. He can climb. He's, he's quickish. So hopefully he can land himself in, in a right move. Hmm. Uh, Ineos Grenadiers, a lot to make up for from the tour where they went from the GC favourite to still picking up a stage win, but I think there's a bit to make up here with Geraint Thomas leading um, and a pretty hot squad, as Max touched on before, full of TT horsepower as well as uh, a bit of support in the mountains for Geraint. I think he's the deserving favourite. Yeah, he was he was strong in that lead up event that I mentioned before, um, and got a really strong team around him. My boy Taylor Gagan, who I thought was stiff to stiff to miss the tour. Um, mm-hmm. Cachaveo always seems to find a leg no matter when he's called upon, um, and then some really strong boys um, in Dennis, who's probably their number two plan, Is he? I don't know. Is or, or Gagan had been their number two? I don't know. Yeah, um, I thought it was and then. Gagan. And then surprisingly, Ben Swift. I don't know what he's what he's going to bring, but it's going to be fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing, I think the other the other important point is because there's so much time trial, and Geraint was did a very impressive performance at Worlds relative to his companions. Um, I think, yeah, look at, look out, Geraint Thomas. A little bit flat that he didn't make the Tour de France team. Can we um, just touch on uh, what happened quickly at, at the World Championships? Grant Thomas didn't have a Garmin on his TT bike. Did he? No. He, 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 so he was obviously warming up on another bike, got to his TT bike before the start, and there was no Garmin on there. And he's like, where, where is my Garmin? Um, so that's a little bit concerning. A team with a 40 million euro budget can't get a Garmin on a TT bike. You'd think they'd so have he did, a Garmin. So he, he, he rode with nothing. Yeah, and he he wasn't Just saying that was, he, he wasn't saying that's why he didn't win, but uh, it, it, definitely in a time trial, it would be nice to have some data to work to. Um, yeah. 
So he was just he was just riding blind. So uh, yeah, interesting. Also, like how how does it how does it go from how how hard is it to get a Garmin like a a Garmin from yeah they can't be starting like twenty k's from where they're warming up. I I don't know. I don't know why he didn't have a Garmin. It doesn't make any sense at all. Mm. Wow. Uh, but just touching on Max's point, I think Gogan Hart will probably be the number two, and um, I'd, I'd like to see him get a little bit of free reign, a little bit of that second leadership kind of role, because he's getting to an age now where, uh, what is he, 25, 26? Like, and there's guys that are 21 winning Tour de France. So if he is going to be <clears throat> starting to compete, I think he needs to start getting some exposure to doing three weeks in the front. Past his prime for mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was a young pup two years ago and now he's a dinosaur. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Team Jumbo Visma, uh, another team that has probably something to win win back from the Tour de France after they were unhitched on the final time trial. Stephen Kreisweik, a third in the Tour last year, he's leading the chase. Um, an unfortunate crash earlier on in the this take two of the season. But um I think this is a force to be reckoned with. This is as strong if Crowswick is back to his uh, full fitness. This is as as strong as their tour lineup in terms of the format, like the guys are up against in the Giro. So Bowman and Tolhawk will be there until the final 15 people as domestics. So he's got some support in the hills and then he's got the pool again on the flat so it's all depending on if he's fit i'm not sure what his time trying ability is like cruiserick is he up there i think he can handle himself okay he's no uh no lopez yeah <laughs> so he's he's almost as certain if he stays on his bike to to finish with thomas somewhere either yeah one of them first or um yeah i don't know which order they'll be in it looks like thomas will win but cruiserick would definitely be there yeah it's, I'm he's got the you go. He's got the uh, nightmares of 2016 just in the back of his mind, mm. coming Rap- so close Rap- and spinning it. Place, yeah. yeah. I just want to touch quickly on Chris Harper. I'm excited yeah. about Chris Harper in this in this Giro. We know at his best, he he's an incredible bike rider, good climber, and uh, these break like breakaways breakaways in the mountains have got his name written all over it. So hopefully he's in good shape and gets a little bit of leeway from the team. And uh, yeah, it's going to be exciting watching him. That's for sure. Mm. Uh, team Sunweb, they've got Michael Matthews who, well, Team Sunweb, first of all, Max, in our tour preview, we are uh, fair to say we weren't overly impressed with Team Sunweb and boy, did they come to the chase in the Tour de France, picking up multiple stage wins and then Hershey picking up a win on Wednesday night as well. I think the omission of Matthews was more than justified by them, but they've taken Matthews. He's signed with Mitchell and Scott, which came out mid-tour. They've got a couple of other Australians next to him and maybe Wilco for a general. They've got a similar vibe uh, I'm thinking they're going to do a similar thing now that they're, they're addicted to stage wins. <laughs> that that Wilco might not necessarily be the GC man that we think he might be. I think they might. They've got some great names on that list, and it's almost one of the better teams coming to the Giro. Um, so I think they might do something similar to what they did in the tour with some better names, which will make it even better. Yeah, I, I agree. It's it's a it's a nice team on, on paper. It looks. Probably looks a little bit better than their Tour de France team. So uh, if they go with the same approach, if Kelderman chooses to go for stages, um, him and Matthews are, are genuine world-class riders. And um, you're a bit of a fan of Sam Uman too, mm. uh, correct, Max? He's one of your boys. Yeah, he's he's uh, he's one of the better domestiques uh, going around. Um, but once again, he can easily win a couple of stages in those breakaway mountains. So... Um, I remember, I didn't, uh, was it when Kelderman was GC a couple of years ago, uh, he was struggling and Uman and, and ended up being their lead rider and rode well. Yeah. Um, from memory. So I, I, that's a, I've pulled that out of my ass. I don't know if that's true or not, but it sounded true. <laughs> um, and th- three Australians, Chris Hamilton and Jai Hindley going with with Matthews is, um, it's nice to see. Jai Hindley, 
breakaways sort of uh, with with Harper, same sort of mold rider. It would be be good to see. Mm. Uh, Trixie Gafredo. Also, there's been two teams in the media this week: EF Education and Trek Sigafredo. Um, thanks to Quinn Simmons, he got <laughs> hot fingers on Twitter this, this week. This guy, <laughs> Ooh, you know. Last last week, or a couple of weeks ago, he was arcing up about or saying some pretty strong comments about um, the UCI and the um, governing body and the. Uh, rider representation group that they 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 put forward, which we we in Campbell actually complimented. We thought it was quite good that he was um, showing his views. But this week he uh, currently isn't riding for the rest of the season after a, <laughs> after a inappropriate response to a to a Twitter message, and um, yeah, Quinn's Quinn's out of the season. Have you have you got yourself in hot water before, Max, on socials? Uh, not on socials, no. Um, that that sort of that answer is implying that I've been in hot water off socials. No, <laughs> <laughs> well, we know about the smoke. <laughs> right? uh, yeah, yeah, um, no, uh, but it can it can get on you quickly. There there has been some guys. I remember Clay Oliver and Damian Martin had a massive. Uh, Twitter fire. As in um, the number four for Australia in the early 2000s. Exactly. Damien Martin questioned <laughs> Clayton Oliver diving. And before Clayton Oliver jumped on a plane, he sent back a tweet questioning one of his performances in the 99 World <laughs> Cup or something. <laughs> <laughs> and we obviously got on the plane and no data. And when we got back, the media manager told Clayton to take it down. So it must have been a bit more than that. But Oh, that is actually hilarious. <laughs> do you get, like, do you, what sort of. Um, like training and and protocol do you guys get given for for social media because i mean there are a lot of positives that can come from it but a lot of the time it just leads to hot water for for young boys oh it's easily the biggest thing that's uh in our young by our young guys at the moment um you get a lot of guys deleting their social media um which isn't good like you want guys to be the best version of themselves and act like a normal 21 year old and not delete their social media and hope they'll mm -hmm. on it so um, you got to learn how to how to use it. Um, Christian Petraka, for his first year at the club, uh, tweeted every Friday night when Collingwood were playing, saying hashtag Go Pies. So we had to had to bring him back a bit and let him know he was playing for Melbourne. But um, so you, you get a lot of that. You get a lot of the older guys will make fun of stuff, and then that'll bring you into line and make you uh, tweet the right stuff. And then you also have. Um, the welfare side of stuff where you need guys to be able to deal with um, the hate that you're going to get um, mm. and also potentially just not even look at uh, – because you can look for the, you can look for the hate. Um, my, my Twitter and Instagrams are very safe. I don't, I don't see it very often. I don't go searching for it. So that's what you've got to try and teach. So if you, if you don't play at your peak max and you finish the game on Saturday night, will you wake up on Sunday with just – guys and girls just tearing shreds off you? Yeah, and it tends to be very multi-related. Um, if I don't get over 15, <laughs> over 15 disposals, it's apparently the magic number. Um, and when people lose their multis, they tend to get a bit more aggro and a little bit more abusive in their message. Mm. It's, did, um, that, horrible. did that take getting used to? Like, was that a bit weird at first? Having... Uh, yeah, yes and no. Like I said, I've, I've, I'm one who hasn't struggled with it and I don't look for it. Um, but when I do come across it, I, I, I laugh it off. But I've had a strict rule almost my whole career that I, I don't reply to requests, let alone if they're positive or negative, I just don't reply. And it's it's saved me when it comes to wanting to bite at someone because I've, I've had this strict sort of protocol throughout where I haven't replied. Yeah, mm. I think it's, 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 it's just a lot of trouble that lies with uh, with social media. And young young Quinn's found himself in some hot water. And um, uh, we were talking a little bit about this on the phone today, Alex. It's uh, you know, there's a lot of young guys coming through, and it's quite easy to replace uh, a loose cannon like this. So hopefully they provide him the the support that he needs. But if he's going to be carrying him like that, I don't think he's going to have many friends in the sport. It's a it's a hard one um, because, as Max said, like you want you want their personality to be represented. You want authenticity. You want um, 
them to reflect, to be popular on social, not popular on social, but, you know, it, it generally goes hand in hand. If you're more authentic on social, like the followers come and the engagements come. But I think Quinn got a bit out of his, uh, a bit out of, out of his lines and decided to get political, which <laughs> I don't think has ever been a good idea for anyone. Political is almost a strict no. Well, no, no, Quinn took it a step further. He went political and racial. Yeah. And it's for, just for, just just forgot for some reason what was happening in the world and what had happened over the last six months. And it, come on, Quinn. Yeah. Read the room, Quinn. Um, but Trek Second Friday, headed up by the hometown hero, uh, Vincenzo Nibali. Back to the chase. Uh, there's, there's, there's a bigger talking point um, with this team. Uh, above Vincenzo Nibali, it's uh, the inclusion of Peter Veening. <laughs> well, no, no. The... How long's Peter been riding for Trek? Uh, since the fifth of June. <laughs> Straight, he's been drafted from Rumput at thirty-nine years of age, um, mid-season transfer. It's got to be the weirdest signing of all time. He must be there for a reason. What is happening? What's what is going on there? The bid ons he can put in his jersey more than anyone else apparently. Yeah, he signed pro in two thousand and four. <laughs> Aside uh, from Peter winning, they they have taken a stronger. Richie would have done maybe a tad better with this with this uh, team they're bringing. Um, so vincesco has got legs. Um, yeah, he, it could be exciting. He's got his brother there, Antonio, as well. Which we know the Stanley Street love, uh, the brothers of stars getting uh, getting starts. Yeah. yeah. Um, Lockie Morton did clip us for having a little bit of a joke about Antonio last year. So uh, hopefully he can have a good ride, but very Italian. Well, it, it, worked, it worked for Quintana in the tour. Um, so <laughs> it might work for Nibley here. Yeah. UAE Emirates, UAE Team Emirates, um, coming off Tour de France victory. Yulisi Gaviria in the mix. They're going to be all fun the, to watch. All these boys are fighting for a job next year. Uh, it's all about Tadair going forward. So who wants to put their hand up to be in that Tour de France team? Who wants to be in the in the plans for Tadair going forward? That's what these boys are are riding for. Mm. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun to watch these guys because Diego Ulysses stage wins, Valeria Conti stage wins, Joe Dombrowski, um, a good American, uh, and then Gavilia with potentially the lack of speed and sprints as it was mentioned before. He could be the number two here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, UAE could be could be doing it all again. Yep, he's got Richetza, Maximilio as well for for lead out. So you probably think that's going to be him and and Demar going for the sprints. Who's should we go through the picks? Any last comments before you take a punt? Wow, well, I don't think we're going to touch on any of the pro Conti teams. I don't think we have a whole lot of insight. No, nah, I haven't got much to tell. There. Um, Max, do you want to kick things off with who, who, well, who are your top three? And then also maybe the green jersey. I reckon the green jersey competition is pretty hot yet again. Uh, well. The top three, I mean, I can't go, but the Cruiswick and, and Thomas one and two. I'll go Thomas one, and I'm presuming we're all going Thomas one just because of um, the the way the race is folding out with three TTs um, and a really, really strong team around him, Cruiswick two. And then uh, this is a massive toss-up. So I'm going to say Astana um, cook it. And they end up <laughs> saving their saving their Giro with a couple of stage wins towards the end. But um, I'm going to go Rafa Micah for third. Oof. Ooh, yeah. Campbell? Um, uh, I'm going to go... I'm going to go Simon Yates to win. Uh, Fusang in second... And Geraint Thomas, third. Yep. I'm going to go. I, I don't think Geraint can be beaten based off the amount of time trialing there it is. I think he'll win it on the time trialing. Yates, probably the strongest climber. 
um, but not strong enough to distance Geraint and Vlasov in third to take over <laughs> Astana's GC hopes. I don't um, mind. Does Fulz yeah. fall, fall off his bike, does he? Full, full saying, no, nah, Fulz saying falls, falls away and uh, Vlasov continues the trend of young pups. Yeah. Um, succeeding in 2020. The green jersey, Damar Sargon, Matthews, Gaviria, Viviani slash Cassani. What are you thinking there? Have you? Uh, do you know much where where the intermediate stuff's located? Is it Sargon no, no, territory, Sargon Matthews territory? Although Demar's been can get over hills now as well. Well, I think I think um, Matthew showed on uh, last weekend at the Worlds that he's in good good climbing. Nick, uh, I'm. I think I think Matthew's going to win the green jersey. I think Sargon's going to struggle to back up from the tour. He wasn't that hot at the tour, um, and Matthews is going to win the green jersey. For me, based off the based off the intermediates, I think. Yeah. Uh, Jamie's actually just picked up on a good point too. We've been talking about the green jersey; it's purple. Yeah, that is that is correct. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go Demar as well. I think he's he's just he's the quickest guy there. He might not accumulate as many intermediates, but he's going to chalk up enough stage wins that all. It'll be enough. Uh, and the KOM jersey, I guess it's um, you know to draw it out of a hat. Yeah. <laughs> to raffle. Taking There'll be an up. Italian. If Nibali falls over early, Ciccone is probably your favourite there. Yeah. Mm. I'm not going to go near that. Yep. That's where the value is, though. Campbell, <laughs> if you can find one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's where it lies. <laughs> <laughs> Just put a dollar on every Italian. You'll probably come out best. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mind you, I thought yeah. every Frenchman would be going for the King of the Mountain uh, jersey in France, and Kozlovar was pretty much the only one. The big names like Bardet and uh, Barguil, and these guys didn't even look like they wanted the King of the Mountain. No, so, oh, they they got in trouble, Max, because they were half decent on the general. Yeah. Um, and then by the time it got to them falling off the general, the KOM jersey was run and won without the hoop. <laughs> Uh, I was talking to Campbell before. We're going to be going. Uh, we're going to do day by day, as we did at the tour, day by day live at five thirty um, to go through this plus everything else that's on at the same time. Max, you're welcome to join any day you want. Um, so hopefully you can tune in as well as uh, we'll be sitting here in Melbourne doing not much else besides watching bike race for the next the next three or four weeks, and then. Um, I don't know how we'll go with the World Tour. I'll pick my days. I won't. I won't pick the days Simon Yates and Full Zone do well because I haven't tipped them. <laughs> um, but I'll be um, on that day when Full Zone tanks it. Don't worry about that. I'll be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Max. Thanks for joining us, Campbell. Thanks, Alex. Um, Thanks, Jens. And we'll talk to you all soon. Thanks for tuning in.